Good afternoon, listener. It's time again for Icons of History on Uzisa 96.1 FM. Owere, uh, we just want to let you know that there is a slight adjustment on the time for this program. Uh, it's been shifted from 8 o'clock to 9.30 p.m. So it's going to run from 9.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. And I'm sure... You are ready for the program today. I'm Akobi Dima, a.k.a. Abdul, your activist on radio. And I'm fully loaded to give you um, the package today. And um, what, who are we going to be talking about today? Uh, we are going to be talking about Sir Francis Akano Ebiam. Sir Francis Akano Ebiam. Um, some of our young stars today may not actually know who this man is. So that is the essence of the program. So don't go anywhere. Stay glued to your radio. We're going to tell you who San Francis Akano Ibiam is in our history. Let us listen to um, Paul Sankano. Paul Sankano. Let's listen to uh, Paul Sankano and then uh, we'll come back. Okudele. Okudele in Korea. So we'll come back. Paul Sankano. Don't worry, leave them. I'm on my main line. It's okay. The AC. Mm. The marriage. Yes, I think I'm going to Okay, that was uh, the celebrated uh, Paul and Carno there with his uh, beautiful uh, lyrics and rhythm, uh, Oko Dele. That song is a masterpiece, okay? And um, of course, you know that uh, Paul and Carno is uh, from the same side of uh, Igbo land um, with uh, Sir Francis Akano Abiam. So probably that's why his song is coming first. Uh, they hail from uh, the same Ohofia Afibu. Uh, Breba Axis, you know, and um, uh, that song is loved by a lot of people, Okudele. And uh, if you go to the, that song is very philosophical, you know, the message. Uh, that is the difference between uh, the music they played at that time and the music you have today. Uh, the music you have, you have today, just dance hall, uh, rhythm and, you know, just dance and go. But um, those yesteryear songs, they had... Uh, uh, you know, they were philosophical, they had messages, 
and they were very touching. You know, that Paul Song Carlos song is still playing out today. You know, the 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 the, 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 the struggle between the big man and the poor man in the society, you know, the class struggle, and it's still on. All right, let's go straight to um, our discussion for today. And um, we'll be discussing um, uh, Sir Francis Akano Mbiam. That's the man we'll be looking, you know, into. And uh, we're going to, because of um, um, popular demand, we are going to make the program interactive. So after the first 30 minutes, we are going to open up the phone line so that uh, we can interact with the listening uh uh, audience and then you can also you know make some input but i'm i'm going to have a question i will ask uh which you are going to answer by the end uh, of the show when we open up the phone lines you will begin to answer that question and that question is first who was the first woman to drive a car in nigeria and in what year the first woman to drive a car in nigeria and in what year okay this is the question uh, i have for you um when I open up the phone lines, when we begin interactions, you'll be able to answer this question. But for now, let me go straight to um, the um, biography of uh, Sir Francis Akano Ibiam. Uh, Sir Francis Akano Ibiam, well, he was born on the 29th of November 1906 in Owana. Owana is a town uh, close to Afibo in present day Ebo State in Nigeria. To the family, he was born to the family of Chief Ibiam Akano. Uh, Chief Ibiam Akano is a well known and highly respected traditional ruler in the village clan of Wana. You know, he was a year old when his father died. You know, and um, uh, that did not deter him. Uh, Ibiam was brought up uh, by his elder brother Samuel Aka Ibiam, who was a teacher at the Hope. Wado Training Institute in Calabar. Uh, he enrolled Ibiam at Hope Wado Primary School in 1912. Remember Hope Wado, one of the foremost primary schools in Nigeria that produced a lot and a lot of uh, icons in this country, Hope Wado Primary School. I wish I attended that school, but I'm still proud of uh, <laughs> the WB Primary School where I, you know, I did my own primary school. We also have some, you know, powerful icons, uh, uh, from that school, but Hope Wardell was, you know, actually uh, something else. And um, uh, he wrote Ibiam at Hope Wardo Primary School in 1912. In 1916, Ibiam was admitted to the junior secondary section of that school. Okay, and um, he was baptized in 1919 and given the name Francis. Okay, and then um, in order to study science, uh, science subjects like physics, chemistry, biology. He was transferred in 1921 from Hope Waddell to King's College, Lagos. And um, his ambition was to study medicine. Of course, you know, at that time, <laughs> medicine was, uh, you know, uh, in high demand. So his ambition was to study medicine. Um, at King's College, he distinguished himself not only in the field of sports and soccer, but also in his studies he was a great he was very cerebral intelligent you know um he completed his course at king's college in 1924 and passed the senior cambridge certificate exam with distinction okay all right um let me pause here i'm gonna come back because uh, we're gonna be mixing this with um some you know yesteryear's uh tunes to you know really drive the study and the knowledge deep into our <laughs> medulla oblongata some people will say okay let's listen to the apostles Meregini, the apostles of abba let's listen to you know that old song they say the older the sweeter Meregini. <laughs>
Okay, um, Apostles of Abba, Meregini, I'm sure you enjoyed uh, that song. It's an old one, okay? And um, the older, the sweeter, like I said. Okay, and that's how we do it in this program, Icons of History. We'll try to bring back, you know, nostalgia. We'll try to, you know, uh, you know, bring back uh, reminiscence. All right, um, uh, the, we are looking at Sir Francis Akano Ibiam. We are trying to uh, tell you who Sir Francis Akano Ibiam is. Is. And I did tell you that um, um, he was at King's College in 1924 and passed the Senior Cambridge Certificate Exam with distinction. And then Francis went to the UK to study medicine at the University of St. Andrews uh, with the full financial support of his elder brother, Samuel. He graduated from medicine in 1934. To tell you that uh, it's, all, it's been in the culture of the world to be their brothers, keepers, to help their brothers and all that. And I don't know whether we are still keeping to that culture, that tradition today. How helpful, how supportive, how, uh, uh, yeah, supportive have you been to your brothers, your relations, your, your siblings, you know, his elder brother supported him. And I'm sure at that time his elder brother was not educated, but he, you know, he foresaw the, uh, the, the importance of education and invested, you know, in his brother, supporting him to acquire education. All right, now let's go to the career part and uh, the ministry life of uh, uh, Sir Dr. Kano Ibiam. On his return to Nigeria in August 1935, Francis chose to be a missionary medical doctor under the auspices of the Church of Scotland mission. He was inspired to do this by his abiding admiration for the Scottish missionaries who left the, the beauty and bounty of their homes to serve in remote places uh, like his village on Owana. And the question is, today's pastors and ministers and evangelists and ministries, can they do what these Scottish missionaries did at that time? You know, people that came from the first world, where they virtually had everything going for them, beautiful country good economy everything but they came to africa the remote and you know settled in the remote area of uh Oana doing their missionary job and that is what christian christianity actually entails because christ says you're going to deny yourself and then you know go out there for the sufferings of others 
which is actually what Christ himself did when he came here to save mankind. And who amongst our present day pastors and you know preachers, you know, can do this? Today we have pastors who are flying on jets, private jets, you know, who collect big uh, um, what you, uh, church collections and all that. By the way, uh, you know, Nigeria has, a, I mean, Lagos State has a placed embargo on uh, the church and uh, mosque gatherings, you know, uh, henceforth. And that means uh, <laughs> church collection might be, you know, some kind of fire from those people. But, you know, the question is how many of these people can actually, you know, do the line of sacrifice and self-denial of these missionaries who did it at the earliest time. Okay? Okay, let's go on. It says that Ibian was given the assignment of opening up a rural hospital in Abreba. In 1936, he began by setting up a dispensary and consequently expanded the facility to a hospital which served the surrounding villages like Onhafia, Item, Ibere, and Uburu. He also advanced the cause of women by promoting maternity work and child welfare services. Through his efforts, hospital services on Oboro and Itu received financial grants from the government of the Eastern Region of Nigeria and from the Presbyterian Church in Nigeria. Okay? Um, as an African of the Igbo extraction, uh, Dr. Ibiam understood the impact of uh, superstition and witchcraft beliefs on his people. You know, that time there was so much uh, <laughs> uh, belief in witchcraft, superstition, and you know, fetishism, and all you know, that. But uh, these beliefs caused the people to attribute all their problems, like barrenness, the birth of twins. Remember that time, you know, twins were at law, they were taboo. You know, malaria, miscarriages, fever, stroke, people attached them to demonic attacks. You know, but I don't think those things have also, uh, I don't think it has dropped today because uh, in most churches, if you go to so, so most churches today, uh, what booms, what draws uh, membership is the ability to, you know, arrogate or connect whatever challenge anybody has or whatever difficulty anybody has to, you know, attack, demonic attack or your brother attacking you, your sister attacking you, your relationship attacking you, and all that. That has also <laughs> remained, you know, the, the, the trend today. But at that time, you know, Ibian felt that this was, you know, you know uh, impacting wrongly on his people, you know. So Dr. Ibian was bold and fearless, but sympathetic in dispelling these fears from the minds of his patients, you know, as a doctor. He gave them physical healing through Western medicine, and spiritual and emotional healing through the dynamic preachings of the gospel. All right. Um. Remember the question I am asking today. The question I'm asking today is: Who was the first woman that drove a car in Nigeria, and in what year? That's a big question I'm asking today. All right. We're going to come back to continue, but let's listen to Oshukwonyarema Peacock. We have gone from uh, Afibo. Axis enter Aba, and from Aba we are here in Owere. So let's listen to the peacock guitar as uh, they sing Oshuku Onyarema.
All right, that was uh, the peacock guitar. Ushuku onye arema. Anye Okay. All right. Um. Uh, we are still looking at um the life and time of uh Dr. Akano Ibiam. You know, and um the the, the exploits he did. Uh, let's look at his uh public service and administration life. Um, though Dr. Kanebiam served as a missionary medical doctor, he equally maintained an active and transparent interest in education and politics. As early as 1940, he represented his people in the Afibo Division Council and later became a member of both the Eastern House of Assembly and the Legislative Council in Nigeria. Five years later, in 1951, he won the election into the Eastern House of Assembly and was later decorated by King George VI of Britain as a Knight of the British Empire. On October 21st, 1960, Sir Francis Ibian was appointed to the post of Governor of the Eastern Region of Nigeria. Ibian brought his Christian belief to bear on some of the vital decisions of the government. Though this rule was ceremonial, yet the refusal to give his assent to the bills promoting lottery in the region, you can imagine at that time, he refused to sign the bill promoting lottery. <laughs> but today, everybody is playing Beth Niger. Yeah, you know, no, no morals anymore. Okay, but Ibia wouldn't do that. He would never sign to the bill that promoted lottery. You know, and at that time, it, maybe it was a local pool or whatever. You know, but today it's just Beth Niger at every corner, and what are young people doing? Every all, every one of them, you know, it's even big men secretly play Beth Niger. You understand? <laughs> That's you know as bad as it is. All right, now he threatened to resign rather than give approval to such a bill. Consequently, the bill did not see the light of the day. He strongly detested and spoke against ethnicity anywhere. He was in. He was an advocate of meritocracy rather than mediocrity. He advocated for credibility rather than ethnicity. Um, Ibiam's career as an educationist came to the fore with his appointment as the first Nigerian principal of the Hope Warden Wardle Training Institute in Calabar in 1958. Remember his alma mater. This was a renowned comprehensive post primary school that has its credit the making of outstanding Nigerians. Leading statesmen, medical doctors, engineers, theologians, and university professors. Okay, now look at let's look at his traditional life. Uh, in 1983, Dr. Ibian was decorated with the traditional title of Ezogo Ishala of uh, Owana, the local community where he was born. His traditional title was conferred upon him in recognition of his shining contributions to the welfare of his community and that of the nation at large. In continued recognition of his talent contributions to the field of education, politics, medicine, and Christian, Christian community service, Dr. Ibian received many awards. The honorary doctorate degree of LLD was conferred upon him by the University of Ibado. The DSC honorary degree by the University of Ife. He was also elected chairman of Christian Council of Nigeria, CCN, and chairman of the Imo State Council of Chiefs. Remember that time, Afibo was in Imo State, the old Imo State, and he was the you know a former chairman of the Council of Chiefs 
in, in, in Imo State. And then um, he has um, so many, so many uh, uh, confinements and uh, responsibility that, responsibilities that were bestowed on him. Uh, he was a member of the Legislative Council of Nigeria, a uh, member of the Executive Council of Nigeria. I was a member of the Board of Governors, Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Omar Ibeku. He was a member, Provincial Council of the University of Ibado, member, Privy Council, Eastern Region. Uh, President Christian Council of Nigeria, member, Administrative Committee of International Missionary Council, and so on and so on, Governor of Eastern Nigeria. But one remarkable thing is that um, during the Civil War, you know, Dr. Ibiam, um, Dr. Ibiam wrote a letter, you know, he, he wrote a letter to Her Majesty, the Queen of England, you know, in protest of uh, the British support against uh, the then, uh, the defunct uh, Biafran uh, Republic at that time, you know. And um, I, I will not be able to read the details of that letter because it is a very long letter that uh, Sir Ibiam wrote. And then he also, after writing, he uh, denounced or rejected some of uh, the um recognitions you know or awards that they gave to him you know in protest of uh you know uh, the carnage that was going then in Iboland. okay um we we'll have time into the program so we're going to open up the phone lines now to interact with those who are listening to uh this program this is icons of history i'm akobi Dima abdul your activists on radio presenting and um we are going to be interacting with you now when you call us uh you try to answer a question ask the question who you know is or uh, was the first woman that drove a car in nigeria and yeah you know she drove that car in nigeria and then um uh, you go ahead to tell us if you have any little thing you know about uh, uh sir francis ibiam and um, also tell us how you feel about this program okay all right, first caller is on the line. Hello. Hello. Oh, we lost first caller. Okay, call us 080-322-53415. 080-322-53415. And 070-826-41625. 070-826-41625. All right, call us. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from? Okay, success. All right. You want to answer a question first? Yes. Okay, so who was the first woman that drove a car in Nigeria? The first woman that drove a car in Nigeria was Mrs. Ofumila Okay, what year was that? I don't know. Okay. All right. Thanks for the attempt. Okay. All right, just tell us the woman that drove uh, the first car in Nigeria and what year she she did that. All right, keep the calls coming. Um, let's um, have a music uh, break and then uh, we'll come back, we'll continue. Let's listen to 77, Power Mike. 77, this time we're going to Enugu State. So let's listen to uh, 77, Power Mike. How should we 97 Tabi? This battery is low. Tab, hmm? we'll buy People are listening to me on so. <laughs> <laughs> the battery is low. Okay, use, use my listen, man. Oh, we did get going to use. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, let me charge it. Check on my oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Charge it. Hmm, charge it. Uh, 
I had a call, I, I wanted to pick the call and then I lost it. Uh, but just keep the call, even, even with the music going on, keep the calls coming. As the calls come, I will tell them. Hello? Please lower the volume on your radio. Lower the volume on your radio. Your name or where you're calling from? I'm Lolo Chinyere Onyeneku. Lolo. The answer is uh, Mrs. Seran from Kuti. Okay, what year was that? that? The year? Yes. I can't remember really. Okay, okay, you're, you're just... Okay, thanks for the attempt. Thanks for the attempt. Later we'll call the okay. result. Thanks for the attempt. Okay. All right, keep the calls coming. Okay, another one is here. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, my name is uh, Nyaramike. Okay. Nyaramike, I'm calling from Ebenezer Community, Romana Town, Olo, Imote. Okay. So, what's the answer to our question? Yes, uh, the answer to your question is uh, that the first woman to drive a car in Nigeria was uh, Mrs. Tumila Yoram from Kuti, the mother to Fela and Okay. Yoruba. Okay. What year? Yeah. What year was that? Uh, that was after 1960, after the independence. Uh, we, we want to know the year. Pardon? I said, want to, we would like to know the year. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for calling. All right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good evening. Hello, I'm Christian. I'm calling from Ewo. Okay, Christian. Uh, okay. The first woman to drive a car in Nigeria was in 2015. Okay. What year? It was not. That year was 1949. Okay. Later we will know whether you are right or not. Before we close the program. Okay, thanks for calling. All right. Uh, before we leave uh, the studio, we will know whether the, that date is right or wrong. Okay, keep the calls coming. All right, let's continue with 7-7. Let, let's, let's finish up that 7-7 uh, song, Power Mike. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, seven seven. Talking about uh, power mic. Uh, one of the days also we are going to be discussing power mic. So many people don't know uh, power mic. A lot of our children these days they watch uh, WWE and uh, they watch uh, John Cena, watch uh, uh, Randy Orton, and so many of them. But they don't know uh, in Nigeria. Sometime in Nigeria we had people like power mic. We had people like I am uh, the Tiger. You know, we have people, even people like uh, Kiliwi, Wachuku. You know, uh, we've, you know, we don't remember these people again, and of course, that is the reason why we're here. So we're going to be digging, you know, deep back into history, way back into history, to once again, you know, bring back uh, uh, memories and stories of these people to inspire, you know, the present generation into greater exploits. Okay, um, the question remains. Uh, who was the first woman to drive a car in Nigeria and in what year? Uh, so far, um, people are responding, but um, before we leave the studio, we'll let you know what the correct answer is. But keep the calls coming. We'd like you to um, you know, answer to our questions and then also um, to make comments about the program and um, uh, probably 
uh, if you have any contribution you can make, you know, on the discussion going on and, you know, the, the importance or the, 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 the import of, you know, what we're actually uh, doing here, okay? It's Icons of History on Ozisa 96.1 FM. All right, um, let's uh, go on to uh, look at um, the exploits of uh, uh, Dr. Akano Ibiam. Okay, Let, let's. Uh, most uh, accounts of uh, Dr. Akano Ibiam, you know, uh, uh, all have a lot of uh, similarities. Like here, um, it says uh, uh, Dr. Akano Ibiam lived uh, from. 29th November 1906 to 1st July 1995. But maybe I have to read that letter he wrote to the Queen. I think it's important. Uh, it's, it, it would be interesting to read uh, at least some part of that letter that he wrote to the Queen. And uh, that letter, he wrote it in February. Uh, no, no, he wrote it uh, during the Civil War. Okay? And uh, in that letter he says, Your Gracious Majesty, I am deeply and humbly constrained to present you with this letter. For many years, indeed, throughout my mature life, I have been a proud but disinterested admirer of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and her peoples. The history of your majesty's country is replete with heroism, discoveries which are near miracles, and institutions of higher learning of the most outstanding character and achievement. Britain though insular and small in size and capacity had centuries ago proved conclusively to the world that for any community and nation to reach the acme of greatness and respectability it is not quantity that counts but quality and the type of people who make up the nation british christians had the privilege an honor of evangelizing not only a good part of Africa, my own continent, but also a greater part of the rest of the world. Okay, he kept uh, uh, elogizing the British and talking about their exploits. But um, I want to hit, uh, um, you know, some of the uh, tough, you know, stands um, uh, he took in that letter. Okay, okay, he said that the most painful. And so that, okay, okay, well, he said that uh, during the months of May, July, August, and September 1966, um, Northern uh, Nigerian soldiers, you know, at that time, you know, that was uh, the mindset. The Northern Nigerian soldiers and civilians planned and committed the most uh, atrocious crimes against Eastern Nigeria, now citizens of the Republic of Biafra. Remember, it's defunct. Sadistically, brutally, and in cold blood. Okay, well, I have a call now. Let me take this call. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good evening. Your name or where you're calling from? I'm Karen, calling from Abakuma. Okay, go on, please. Okay, the question I'm asked is that the name of the woman. Yes. So yeah. I'm in Koti. Okay. What year? 1937. 1937? 1947. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. We'll let you know whether you got it or not. Okay, thanks for calling. All right, and um, why we do this program? We like why we kept it um so late at night is that we expect families to be together when they listen to these programs. The children, you know, especially the children, to listen, you know, because uh, just like Bobali says, uh, if you don't know where you're coming from, you wouldn't know where you're going to. Our history enables us to know and understand where we're coming from, and then. To have an idea of where we are going to so we want um uh our families to you know allow the children to listen to this program and uh, uh you know build and develop their knowledge of our history you know through this program all right uh the man said the most painful and unsoldierly uh, okay he said during the months of may july august and september 1966 uh this is the letter written by uh Dr. Akano Ibiam to the Queen. Northern Nigerian soldiers and civilians planned and committed the most atrocious crimes against Eastern Nigerians. Now, citizens of the Republic of Biafra, statistically, brutally, and in cold blood, they murdered and slaughtered thousands 
of my brothers and sisters who are then living in northern Nigeria and other parts of the former and defunct Federal Republic of Nigeria. They killed innocent children, helpless women, and defenseless men without any reason or rhyme. They entered churches and hospitals and slaughtered them in cold blood, and most unbelievably, yet only too true. They massacred women in actual labor and their unborn children. They plundered, looted, assaulted, and raped women and burned down the homes of Easterners and left them penniless. Okay? He said the most painful and unsoldierly act of all was that these soldiers killed their superior officers, including and especially His Excellency, the military governor of Western Nigeria, Lieutenant Colonel Francis Adekunle Fadri, and his guest and comrade, His Excellency, the head of Supreme Military Council and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Major General JTU Agori Irosi. Hello. Good evening. You're, where are you calling from? I'm calling from here today. Okay. You have an answer to our question? In this, in this uh, uh, academy, there are uh, efforts that we have applied in order to rescue the people. What, what an effort that, uh, that, the, uh, that the world has made in order to rescue the people? Oh, are you asking me now or are you answering? Okay, the effort the world has made. Yeah, not to rescue the people from what is in their life. Uh, well, we are going back to history, telling you what happened. So it's left for you to use that knowledge to guide yourself okay. now. Okay. okay um, All right. I'm, I'm, I'm on the station. All right. Thank you. Okay. And then um, he said, uh, um, um, both of them of blessed memory. And on July 1960, they were kidnapped, you know, by these soldiers and ruthlessly killed after torturing them. It must be stated here that the late Major, Major General Agui Rossi, at that time, went all out to build up one united and strong Nigeria through a unitary government administration. But paradoxically and ironically, he made a cruel and untimely death for that very reason. He said it is very strange, therefore, that Nigeria should be fortily waging a war of aggression against Biafra in her impossible bid to force her back into that same union. Okay, well, that was the letter, you know, except from the letter of uh, Dr. Akanibian, you know, a kind of the protest letter he wrote to the Queen of England at that time, you know. But at the end of the day, well, uh, uh, that war, you know, came to an end with uh, no victor, no vanquish understanding and um, the country was unified again and um, everybody began to march forward okay that's a little about uh, that protest by dr akano ibiam okay um let's go to uh let's take another song now jolly papa jolly papa by jim lawson rekosima you know jim rex lawson rekosima let's take this one jolly Papa. Jolly Papa by Jim Lawson Erekosima.
Okay, let me take this call now. Let me take this call. Hello? Okay, hold on. Good evening. Okay, when, when did she yeah, drive the uh, car? Um, because she's about me, that should be about four, uh, 1949 also. 1949? Uh, yeah, that's in the 1940. Okay. All right, just, just keep listening to the program. You're here. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, During the Nigerian Civil War uh, of 1967 to 1970, uh, Ibiam actively assisted the Biafrans, helping obtain relief supplies through his church contacts. As one of the six presidents of the World Council of Churches, Ebian spoke at the WCC meeting in Uppsala, Sweden in July 1968, where the problem of relief for refugees was discussed. Chief Bola Ige, advisor to the Church of the Province of West Africa, was also present and ensured that the name Biafra was avoided in the WCC resolution. Uh, Chief Bola Ige, you remember Chief Bola Ige, uh, he was a member of that uh, committee and uh, of that meeting and uh, the report has it that he ensured that the name Biafra was avoided in that meeting, okay? Since that would imply recognition of the state. However, Ibia was instrumental in ensuring that the, the, neatly, the nightly airlift of relief into Biafra was started. Remember, relief materials was being flown into Biafra at night because they were avoiding uh, uh, being shot down, you know, by federal federal uh, troops if they put on their lights. So they were flying in the night into uh, Biafra then to supply relief materials. In 1969, he traveled across Canada to raise humanitarian aid and support for the people of Biafra. Uh, Ibiam returned to his knighthood and renounced his English name, Francis, in protest against the British government support of the Nigerian federal government. Okay, that might be the second person who renounced his uh, English name because uh, we know the boycott or boycottables, Mazin Bono Jike, who we are going to discuss one day, who also dropped his English name and went back to his uh, Igbo name. Okay, all right, uh, following the war, Ibiam continued work on reconstruction and hospital service. Ibiam was responsible for the Bible Society of Nigeria and the Christian Medical Fellowship. He became the president of the All Africa Conference of Churches. Good evening. Please go away from your radio. Please stay away from your radio. Good evening. Good evening. Your name or where are you calling from? My name is Okoye. Calling for the Mekukwe Go on, please. Please, I don't have answer to the question, but I just want to contribute. Go on. First of all, I start by saying that God must surely bless you in what you are doing tonight. Thank you. Because there is a comment that you made that it is good for us to hear in history and know where we are coming from so that we can know where we are heading to. Because sometimes when I'm in the house, I used to ask myself where Nigeria are heading to and where are we coming from. I am still a 20, okay, I am still a 30 years old, but since I grew up and know what is history, I never hear about Nigeria history, which I later hear that it was abandoned, that nobody should read Nigeria history. And I used to ask myself, if we fail to you know, read our history, how can we know where we are headed to? The answer is no. But now it comes that Nigeria don't even know where they are heading to. But I want to say God bless you tonight because you really, really open my memory. The room you are talking about from a state, I can't remember. From a state, I from a state. Okay. But I never hear this except as you are saying it tonight. All right. So God must surely bless you, keep on. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you too, people. All right. All right. Uh, okay, that's... um. The reason why we are here, you know, to inform you, to educate you, and also entertain you with uh, the things we do here, okay? And I promise you this program uh, will continue to run, and uh, we'll use this program to excavate and um, expose a lot in our history, okay? And this program is also open for sponsorship. If there are those who want to 
you know come sponsor us because this program is not all it's not going to be an all studio program there will be times we have to go out to it's not only about dead icons also the living you know icons who have to move out sometimes to interview them sometimes to bring them here and sometimes to you know visit some uh, historical sites archaeological artifacts and all that to you know uh, bring them to your knowledge all right um we are still on with the program hello please lower the volume on your radio please lower the volume on. okay I have your number. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a call, okay? okay and then we can take number. it from there. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Keep the calls coming now. Well, time is now. We just have five minutes before we, we'll, uh, you know, leave the studio, okay? And um, remember our question. The question is: Who is the first woman that drove? vehicle in nigeria and uh, in what year okay we've had people call we have uh, people saying and uh, suggesting uh they've all got the name of the woman right mrs fumilayo ramson kuti okay but the year um, uh, when she drove uh, the vehicle is still what is contentious here hello hello yeah good evening your name where you're calling from could you please speak up? We, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are struggling to hear you. Okay. I'm yeah. calling from Upper Nose Street. Okay. Your name is what? My name is Joshua. Joshua, all right. Joshua, go on. Uh, please, I don't have an answer to, to answer about the special woman that uh, drove the uh, vehicle. Okay. So I really appreciate the speech the, the that I made it. I made me to know Okay, okay. Uh, for those who want my number, you want to have, you have my number, you have your pen and your my number is zero eight one zero six eight four eight nine eight five. Is it dialing? <laughs> you are dialing while you are listening. Okay, the number is zero eight one zero six eight four eight nine eight five zero eight one zero six eight four eight nine eight five. All right, um, time is on our side now, so we're going to be wrapping it up. I'll be back sometime next week. Uh, when we're going to look at another uh, icon in our history or an, another or another issue in our history. Okay, um, I'll be signing off now till I come sometime next week. I'm Akobi Dima, a.k.a. Abdul, and I say Aluta Continua. But I'm going out with the first song that we didn't play to full, which we're going to play now, which is the song of our person, Kano Okudele. Let's sign off with Okudele.